Hello everybody, I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Hey, I have an update for you on a big storm system that will roll out of the central and southern Rockies as we go into next week. And as it lifts northward and mingles with some cold air, flakes could fly. Now, this storm system looks fairly strong. We could see some areas that get wind and snow combined at the same time. We're going to look at the track and the timing and find out the consistencies between the different long range models that we use to forecast these things. We're going to put a little levity in this, a grain of salt and tell you what we don't know as well. And we'll look at snowfall potential because there's some consistency there between the different models that we use to help us decide or give us as meteorologists guidance on what these systems may do in the long distance future. Let's get started with what's behind me right now. And with that, we'll zoom into the Northern Plains. Now, as we go into the day on Tuesday, you're going to see the chance of rain increasing in places like Minneapolis, Des Moines, eventually Fargo, all the way out into parts of Wisconsin, including Green Bay. Now, this system is going to be tugging some cold air on the back side of it, uh, north winds, ushering in that cold Canadian air. Uh, if that transition does happen, there's going to be bands of snow most likely setting up on the west and northern side as we go from, well, basically Monday night and into Tuesday. So rain becomes and mixes with snow as we go into Tuesday. This is the American model. The model says that there could be some snow spreading into parts of the northern reaches of North Dakota and Minnesota. Minneapolis, no snow yet with this particular system. And then as we continue through time, that snow chance continues basically from Tuesday all the way into the morning hours on Wednesday. Some areas could see up to maybe even a little more than 24 hours of snowfall. It doesn't look to be all the time, all day long on this particular model, but there could be some areas with some heavier snow. Now, as this storm system mingles with the moisture that's available in and around the Great Lakes, and as it's tugging cold air on the backside, places like Chicago, Northern Illinois, all the way out towards, well, maybe even uh, Toledo, Ohio, will have a chance at seeing a few flakes mix in with this system. You see here by Fort Wayne with the cold air wrapping in on the backside. Again, warm, moist air working its way in. This time of the year, these systems are a little bit of a challenge to forecast. This is a look at the American model. Now let's take a look at a couple of more and then we'll get to the snowfall potential with this once we dial in the timing. But the timing on the American model. Tuesday through Wednesday, the best chance of snow in the northern plains. Let's see what that European model has to say as this system works its way out of the southern plains and into the northern plains. On this particular model, what we're going to do is have a look at the, well, isobars you're seeing on here, the winds. So here's the low pressure system that moves through the northern plains this week. Again, that'll bring a shot of some snow. Hunters up in the Northland, pretty happy about that. Here's the main event developing in the Southern Rockies right here. That's Monday morning, heavy rain, even strong thunderstorms as the cold dry air moving off the high plains mingles with Gulf of Mexico moisture in Texas, in Arkansas. Another round of much needed rain, by the way, for Arkansas. As this system on the European model here lifts northward, we'll see that it pushes its way into South Dakota. Rain basically spreading off on the warm side of the system, but here's the backside or the cold side, and that's in the Dakotas, and that could bring a chance for some heavy snow in places and wind as well. Let's look at one more model before we move on too quickly. We'll take a look at the Canadian model here. And oh, let me see here. I think I hit the wrong button on that. Let me go ahead and reload this uh, to the Canadian model. Okay. Yes, I did hit the wrong button. My apologies. Now we'll take a look at the forecast, not temperatures, but the track of this storm system. Here it is. All models are agreeing that on Monday, after we get through the weekend, this storm system will roll out of the southern plains and southern Rockies and move almost due north right into Minnesota, Iowa. Cold air on the backside will bring a chance of snow to parts of eastern Dakotas and into uh, parts of Minnesota. And notice this, that snow could scoop all the way into Minneapolis, St. Paul on this model. This is the Canadian model. Look at the isobars here. That would indicate very, very strong and cold, I might add, north winds on the backside of the system. This one looks a little stronger than the other models, and it lingers in the southern Great Lakes all the way through the work week. So this is really slow as well. I don't necessarily buy this particular model. It is an outlier with respect to that. Now, why not look at the 
German model. This is called the icon and it shows similar thing. So once we see three models showing the originating point here, that's on Monday, on Tuesday, impacting the Northern Plains, mixing with cold air and voila, we have snow in the Dakotas, Montana, and it stays there with gusty winds continuing. And then another low moves out. Look at this puppy bringing snow to Oklahoma. Are you kidding me? All the way up through parts of Kansas and well, Kansas City could have wind and snow as we head into Thursday night uh, that week. So all in all, this storm system looks to be impactful. This one, an outlier showing a secondary wave of energy making its way through. What do we know? What don't we know? As far as the timing and the track goes, the storm will likely move out of the southern Rockies. Will move northward, carrying rain, strong thunderstorms, maybe even severe in the southern plains. Uh, heavy rain will push its way north, and by the time we get up closer to the international border in parts of northern Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, that's where the best chance of snow wrapping around on this particular storm system will be. Now, here is a look at what I am expecting with regards to snowfall potential from these same four models. Now, let's go ahead and turn our attention to this, shall we? All right, here's what we need to know. As we take a peek at the snowfall potential, there's four models side by side here. Here's the Canadian with its track more to the east. Here's Minnesota with the pink colors here. That's heavy snow. We'll go over each one of these. The American model has it pushed back a little bit farther to the west. So the Dakotas would see a better chance of some inclement weather and lofty snowfall total potentials. The German model has it mainly out in the Dakotas, particularly the western and central part of North Dakota, and then the European model really focusing on North and South Dakota, all the way south in the parts of Northern Nebraska with the storm system. Now, as a meteorologist with 30 years of broadcasting experience and forecasting in the Northern Plains, I can tell you the European model usually does a better job when we're beyond, say, days four or five. So I'll keep that in mind. But I will say this, the American model has shown some improvements and strides in the last several runs. Why are they different? Because they all use different techniques and approaches to how many layers of the atmosphere they're forecasting for, to how tight the grid is, and how they estimate the values of pressure, temperature, wind speed, and the like uh, on the grid that is where the models run or the globe. So estimating and estimations can be different from model to model. And as we carry that through time, well, any errors in those estimations will expand compound and make these models diverge greatly sometimes in the distant forecast future. Now, let's take a look at model number one. This is a look at the American model that we did look at. This does have some snow potential and mainly across central North Dakota, Bismarck, all the way up through the Devil's Lake Basin and up into Western Minnesota, the amounts fall off because it's mixed with some rain. Now, this is by the time we get to Thursday at noon. So that's the timing for you. Beginning Tuesday is rain changing to snow and some of it quite heavy with wind. Now, these numbers, this is where I want to add a meteorological bit of T take a deep breath. These large scale global models are using a grid that's very large. So they tend to show a huge area of huge snowfall amounts. Not going to happen that way. It rarely does. I've seen it happen this way a couple of times, but in oftentimes we're going to see a narrow band on the backside of the system that gets the loftier snowfall totals. Now, here's what I do know. Oftentimes this time of the year, snowfall amounts can be either way underdone or way overdone because ground temperature has a lot to do with it, how much moisture is in the air, and the temperature between the cloud and the ground plays a huge role into how many fall as flakes and how many fall as drips. Okay, it don't add up on the snow pile if it's drips. Now, this model says in some spots, uh, we could see over one foot of snow in central parts of North Dakota. So that gives Hutch an idea all meteorologists, some guidance here. Okay, probably a little too high, but it is showing a band of higher or loftier snowfall amounts. Here is an area in South Dakota where we have some elevated terrain. The Sisseton Hills, oftentimes models will advertise more lofty snow totals with terrain impacts. So keeping this in mind, lower snowfall totals, but the range is anywhere from a trace on up to close to a foot of snow. All right, let's check model two, shall we? Yeah, this is fun. Oh no. Big shift. This is the Canadian model, and it's showing whoop, mainly in the eastern third of North Dakota and much of Minnesota, including the Twin Cities. Are you kidding me? This is quite a range of snowfall, but again, 
looking at, and this is what I'm drawing from it, the timing is the same. There's a shift of about one, two, 250 miles from the track of the heaviest snow into parts of western Minnesota. But the amounts are similar, which tells me I have some consistency in the model's peak snowfall amounts. Please note, not everybody in this area with the bright red will see the 10 inches to a foot of snow, but it is a start on our forecasting journey as we look at this storm system. Now, here's a look at the German model. It keeps everything back in North Dakota and Northern South Dakota. And it says, again, likewise, similarly, Central North Dakota and out to the West could see bands of heavier snow. My gut tells me I like this model the higher terrain, a little bit higher elevation as we get out into eastern Montana. Colder air arrives sooner in these locations. And typically when we have a system such as this one moving out of the central plains and north, that cold air is more available out west than it is here in the Red River Valley of North Dakota and Minnesota. This is the German model. All right, now let's take a look at this. Similar timeline, similar snowfall amounts, different track. It's west by about oh, a couple hundred miles from that last model. Here's the European one. This one, likewise, little to no snow across Minnesota and the big winners are the Dakotas all the way down into northern parts of Nebraska. Snowfall amounts a trace, but again, we're seeing that number eight to 10 inches, nearly a foot of snow. What does this mean? Let's break it all down back to this. We can look at all of these at this very early stage in the game and say that there's a very good chance that a storm system is going to make its way out of the southern Rockies near New Mexico. As it makes its way northward, if it does take a beeline track towards parts of Iowa and Minnesota, then the heavier snow amounts will be in the Dakotas and the snowfall mounts in some places I feel confident that we'll see some places with six inches of snow. Because the ground is warm, it doesn't accumulate as fast, but if it lasts for 24 hours and it does linger in this area like all four of these models are showing, then we could see a few areas with even higher snowfall amounts. Will it come with a lot of wind? You betcha. It does look like it. Will it be windy the whole time? No, it almost never is. It almost always starts as light winds and then increases as it makes its way through. Will the wind time out with the snow? Too early to call. That's a meteorologist's look, and we must take a big grain of salt when you're looking at all these models that are being broadcast all over the interwebs and, well, maybe even your local television channels. I got to tell you, this is what we're looking at. There's a chance for wintry weather, go figure, as we head into uh, basically the last third of the month of November. Not a surprise. Stay informed and stay up to date with the latest on Hutch's weather. If you liked what you saw here, again, I'm a meteorologist with 30 years of broadcasting experience, almost. I taught in the college level classroom, meteorology, uh, for the better part of 20 years. I worked in research meteorology in Boulder, Colorado for five years, and I love weather, and I love talking about it with you. Drop a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. If you have a question, I'm going to check it out and look for an answer for you. And if I can't find it, I'll let you know. But but for now, again, meteorologist Hutch Johnson, you can visit my website, hutchesweather.com. Interactive radar right there. Stay ahead of the game. I, I forecast up here in the Northern Plains, but if you have a question, I'm going to answer it for you the best of my abilities. And for now, have yourself an awesome night and we'll all be watching what transpires as we head into the middle of next week as we approach basically the 19th and 20th of the month of November.